today's story was written by an American novelist, playwright, and short story writer called Edna Feber. She was born in 1885 and she died in 1968. She has written so many novels and short stories that have won international acclaim. Her novel, So Big, published in 1924, won the Pulitzer Prize, and several of her novels have been adapted for film in Hollywood. Her works are really interesting. That is why I choose her short story, A Bush League Hero, as the first story in this YouTube channel, Literary Pleasures. I hope you do find it very interesting as I did. So, enjoy! Bush League Hero by Edna Feber. In today's story, we are going to highlight five features of our story. The first is we are going to summarize the story, giving you the pertinent details in the story. Then I'll highlight the characters in the story and the plots and what a reader would expect from the story. Then, as well as the meaning we can derive from the story. First, the summary. The narrator starts the story with the words, This is not a baseball story. And she was right. This is not a story about playing baseball or the heroes of baseball. This is a story about what it means to be poor in America and how the middle class despises the poor, even though they might have much talent. In my opinion, the narrator set out to write about class relationships in America, and she masked it as a baseball story, with a dismal love story as an underlying theme. The main character is Ivy Keller, a girl from a middle class background who thinks she's in love with a baseball player, Rudy Schlagweiler, but in actual fact, she's in love with what he would provide for her if he eventually makes it to the big leagues. Her parents disapprove of the relationship from the very start, and they're keen to show her that Rudy would never be the man to give her the comfort that she is used to. When it looks as if she is finally decided to write him and express her affection to him, they show her the rule Rudy, a shoe clerk, a failure in life, and someone who was below her class. She eventually despises him and wonders how she ever came to find him attractive. The title of the story is apt. A bush league is a derogatory term for someone who is below professional standards. Mr. Keller thinks so of Rudy, and he eventually makes his daughter Ivy to have the same opinion. Now the characters in the story. The characters are Ivy Keller, Rudy Schlagweiler, and Mr. Keller, the father to Ivy Keller. First, let's shine a spotlight on Ivy Keller. Ivy Keller is like every other middle class girl who have dreams, who want to marry rich, they want excitement in life, and want to fall in love. But she goes further. In her spare time, she reads a classic and was reading Le Miserable by Victor Hugo when her father introduces her to baseball. The first time she attended a baseball game, she was attracted to Rudy Schlagweiler. She thought he had a strong name and immediately fell in love with baseball because of Rudy. Her parents were disappointed when she started having a relationship with Rudy. They would have none of it 
But like every educated girl, she stuck to her decision. But Ivy was attracted to Rudy not because of who he is or his personality, but because of what he portends. She was interested in him as a baseball player and what being in love with a hero would represent. In her words to her father, let's see what she said. He will be playing in the major leagues in three years. Why? Just yesterday, there was a strange man at the game. A city man you could tell by his hat band and the way his clothes were cut. He stayed through the whole game and never took his eyes off Rudy. I just know he was a scout for the Cubs. So you see that Ivy is trying to tell her father that Rudy has potential that she believes she will, he will play in the major leagues in the nearest future. That is why she was sticking to him. But Ivy's father, who has investigated Rudy, takes her to the shoe shop where Rudy works and shows her that she is only a shoe clerk. Rudy eventually despises, I sorry, Ivy eventually despises Rudy. Now the next character we we'll spotlight on is Rudy Schlagweiler. Rudy Schlagweiler is a baseball player that works on the side as a shoe clerk. In Ivy's opinion, and that also of the narrators, a shoe clerk is a demeaning job. In military term, a shoe clerk is an ass and a foolish job. But girls have crush on Rudy Schlagweiler. But he chooses Ivy. In a baseball suit, Rudy is very handsome, and this is what attracted Ivy to him. He might not be the best baseball player in the team, because he loses the ball sometimes, but he is really popular with the girls. They will never know though that he works as a shoe clerk, except for Mr. Keller. Rudy is eventually sold to the man's team at the end of the story. Now the last character we'll spotlight on is Mr. Keller. Mr. Keller is Ivy's father. He works in an insurance company and he is a community man and even announces guests at the opera house. Mr. Keller loves baseball but he wouldn't entertain the idea that his daughter would have a relationship with a minor league baseball player because in his opinion they do not earn enough. He thought it was a joke that his daughter Ivy should bring Rudy to their home. He is determined to make her see that she is making a mistake. So he strikes a deal with her. She will never see Rudy or write to him until after a month. He wanted to show her that she was making a mistake. After that period, if she then decides to continue the relationship with Rudy, he will not stop her. So, Mr. Keller during that period investigates Rudy and discovers he is a shoe clerk. So, Mr. Keller takes Ivy to Rudy's shoe shop. Ivy gets the message and turns her back on Rudy. That satisfies Mr. Keller. Now for the plot, let's highlight some aspects of the plot as illustrated by the narrator. We see that the action takes place at both the stadium where the team is playing baseball, the local team, and also at the home of the Kellers. The narrator wants us to see the irony between Ivy's wishes to marry someone who is rich and the fact that her hero is just a shoe clerk. Look at how the narrator gives it to us. The narrator begins with a fascinating question. That question is, I rise to ask you, brother fan, when is a ball player not a ball player? Above the storm of facetious replies, 
I shout the answer when it's a shoe clerk. So you see, a shoe clerk is not really a ball player in the true sense of the word. A shoe clerk is nobody. That's what the narrator starts the story with. In the story, every baseball fan in the town loves Rudy Schlagweiler. The girls fawn over him. He is the typical hero that any girl like Ivy will want to have. Ivy though never gets to learn of Rudy until later in the story. We see her when she is back from school and the second day of her stay at home she is already bored. So she takes to reading Les Miserables. The narrator describes her room as a fantastic one with college banners and pedants with medals with awards earned from college. So we get to see her as a high achiever, someone whom her, par who her parents are highly proud of. So like every other girl, Ivy has her dreams. And the first baseball game she attends, she falls in love with the town hero, Rudy Schlagweiler. She adores him. By coincidence, they sit together in a party thrown by Mrs. Freddie Van Dyne. And that is how a relationship started. But ironically, Ivy is in love with what baseball represents to Rudy, and not because Rudy is a handsome man. She is in love with having a life of comfort if she marries Rudy. She sees him as a player who one day would make it to the big leagues. But her parents think otherwise. This is what they tell her. They say, Ivy, I don't like that ball player coming here to see you. The neighbors will talk. So you see, they are trying to express to her that they are embarrassed to have Rudy coming to their, to their home. That the neighbors will be asking questions about his presence. But and also her parents think that Ivy is going too far. So they plan to show Ivy the real Rudy. It is the Rudy who can never be part of her dream of marrying a rich man. When Ivy and Rudy are together, we see in the story that while Ivy, while Rudy wants to talk about the relationship, Ivy's mind is set on discussing the game and how Rudy plays. So the narrator helps us to see that there is a disconsonance in the relationship. Look at what Rudy tells Ivy. Oh, forget baseball for a minute, Ivy. Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about us. Us? Well, you are baseball, aren't you? retorted Ivy. So you see, while Rudy wants to discuss about their relationship, Ivy's mind is set on baseball and what baseball represents with Rudy involved. Ivy is set on making Rudy her beloved. She, be, she begins to write him letters just like other ladies do. But her father, Mr. Keller, discovers it and tells her that it has to stop. This is what he tells her. This thing's got to stop, he thundered. I won't have any girl of mine running the streets with a ball player. Understand? Now, you quit seeing this $75 a month bush liga or leave this house. I mean it. So you see, Mr. Keller calls Rudy a $75 a month bush liga, a very demeaning term. And he gives Rudy the ultimatum. She either stops seeing him or she leaves the house, which is very, very strong indeed. But Ivy thinks otherwise. She believes that Rudy is rich or Rudy has the potential to be rich. So this is what she tells her father. 
Mr. Schlagweiler is employed in a large establishment in Slatersville, Ohio, said Ivy with dignity. He regards baseball as his profession and he cannot do anything that would affect his pitching arm. So Mr. Keller laughs off her idea of who Rudy is. He makes a proposition to her. Don't talk with Rudy for a month, he tells her, and I'll show you who he is. After that, you decide. Ivy agrees. So Mr. Keller has Rudy investigated. He discovers Rudy works in a shoe shop as a clerk. He takes Ivy to the shoe shop as late as view. Ivy is shocked. That puts an end to her dreams with Rudy. So this is an, a very interesting story. A story of dismal love. After reading the title of the story, I had expectations. So I had to look up the meaning of what Bush League was and found out that it means something that is middle care, second rate, a minor league of a professional sport, especially baseball. So I knew this story would involve an underdog and the narrator did not disappoint. But there are some questions I have about the story that I thought would have enhanced its pleasurable appeal. Some of them are, the author does not give us an idea about how Rudy feels concerning his relationship with Ivy. She just skips that aspect of the story as if Rudy was of no consequence. I quarrel with the way she handled that conflict. I also had a nagging feeling after reading the story the second time that Ivy really doesn't believe that Rudy will play in the Major League one day. I thought she was just a foolish girl who was deluding herself. Maybe she was bored and was looking for some excitement. Or maybe Rudy lied to her. In the second paragraph, the author tells us the major thesis behind the story. A ball player is not a ball player when he's a shoe clerk. I was intrigued. So why did she do that? Was she trying to heighten the intrigue surrounding the story? And I didn't see her do that. Was she like saying, hey reader, I don't like ball players who are shoe clerks, one bit. She came out as someone who doesn't have sympathies with poor ball players who are shoe clerks and would prefer to have them put in their place. Now, when Rudy and Ivy meet at the shoe shop, after she discovers where he works, the narrator just hurriedly passes through the scene as if she's embarrassed to make Rudy have a character, a human feeling. I thought she would have done some sort of plot in here, like make Rudy defend himself after lying to Ivy about his prospects, or show us how disturbed Ivy was to find Rudy in such an environment. Make something very, very conflict oriented, but she didn't do it. Honestly, one other thing where my expectation was not fulfilled was the way the story ended. I thought the narrator didn't give a hoot about the feelings of poor talented folks like Rudy. She would rather they understand that they have no place with rich folks like Mr. Keller and Ivy. That intrigued me, so I decided to dig a little into the background of the writer. I found that she was born to a poor Jewish Hungarian storekeeper who, who became blind. And this shows her that she has a sort of loathing for poverty or what it represents in her past. Now, what meaning I derive from it. The reader will find that capitalism and personality is a theme that resonates in the story. Although the story is more than a hundred years old, it is still relevant today. 
it makes us to ask ourselves questions about how we treat those who are less fortunate than us. And do you know what? This is typical of Edna Feber as a writer. She makes you to ask yourself questions about your role in society. And also, she questions the accepted views in the society. Welcome back. I hope you were entertained. I found the story very pleasurable. The link to read the story is indicated down below on the description in the AmericanLiterature.com site. You can click the link and get the story to read yourself. Also, to get notifications when I post more videos on stories by prominent authors, subscribe to this channel. When you subscribe, you will be encouraging me to produce more videos. Have a nice day.